Hey, Gage's Lake. Happy Wednesday. Today's Wednesday, October the 12th. I hope you're having a great day and you've enjoyed the last 24 hours or so of rain. Wow, a lot of rain, I guess. I'm recording this Tuesday. It hasn't started raining yet, but by the time you watch this, it should have been raining. And all I can think of is at least it's not snow, right? Well, I love snow, but uh, one of the groups I follow on Facebook, uh, Storm Group, uh, actually said one of the long-range models showed snow coming uh, soon, and they kind of laughed about it, but they were like, hey, it's coming that time of year, so get your shovels out. Uh, it's going to be here before you know it. Uh, anyway, and I'm excited. I hope you're excited. I love snow, and you guys can just be mad at me. That's fine. No, hey, I wanted to uh, just touch base with you and first of all, uh, say a special thank you uh, from my wife and my family and I uh, for the gifts and the cards and the, the cake and everything this past weekend. Uh, it's such a, uh, a joy to be a part of this church and who would have thought, you know, nine years ago, uh, this is where we would be. But I'm so thankful that God would use us uh, to do great things um, for him, for his glory. Uh, and so I'm so thankful that you have uh, partnered along with us in this journey, and uh, I'm excited for what's to come uh, as far as our our church and, and moving the kingdom forward. Uh, so thank you so much for, for the love and the support that you've provided for my family uh, as we continue to uh, uh, worship together and just walk by faith. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I wanted to just remind you of a couple of things coming up. First of all, this Friday uh, at 6 is our uh, um, family night, and it's a uh, pumpkin theme uh, family night, so please plan. Uh, if you signed up to come, please plan to be here at 6, uh, and we'll have a great time. Uh, tonight is the Women's Bible Study, so ladies who have signed up and are part of that, don't forget that's at 6.30 here tonight at the church uh, as well. And then this coming Saturday is our ladies' breakfast at 8.30. And so uh, a lot of events this week as we've gone through this week. Uh, so uh, just mark your calendars and plan to be a part of them. Uh, don't get over busy. Don't get bur burned out. But at the same time, let's, let's avail ourselves of opportunity. Let's be a part of uh, opportunities as we uh, worship and as we seek to grow in our relationships uh, with God and with one another. So uh, you mark your calendars for that. Also, men, don't forget, we have the men's retreat uh, coming up about a month from now. And uh, if you've signed up uh, and you say, hey, how do I pay for that? Uh, just send a check in or money in to the church. Uh, you can just write a check out to Gages Lake Bible Church. Mark on there for men's retreat. Uh, that way our treasurer, he can organize all of that. We'll just take one check with us up to uh, the retreat when we go. Uh, we'll have a great time and more information as we get closer for that. Uh, you can plan to uh, head up for that. So, uh, And then the family night is actually while we're at the retreat. So that family night uh, for our church will be the moms and the kids staying behind. Uh, and that's going to have an Operation Christmas Child uh, 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 theme to it as they pack boxes for for Operation Christmas Child, which I haven't mentioned at church, but there it is. Uh, coming up, we're doing a, another year of supporting uh, children throughout the world. And so uh, we, we will have the boxes in a few weeks, and uh, you can plan to pick up one, two, a dozen, 20, uh, and fill them up and then bring them back, and we will pray over them and send them off uh, to uh, different parts of the world and sharing the gospel with these uh, children and let them know how much God God loves them. Uh, and so that's coming up. Uh, also, if you have not um, considered and would like to consider being a part of our missions team, we are looking for a leader for our missions team. And so if you are interested in that and being involved in missions, uh, connecting missions with our church, uh, you can check out last week's video. I kind of go in more depth about some of the details for that. Uh, but if you are interested, please uh, send me an email or talk to me at church. I would love to get you plugged in with our admissions team uh, and kind of taking over on that role. I just wanted to share a quick thought uh, from the Word today uh, as we are looking into the fall, uh, kind of wrapping up this, the calendar year, crazy as it is. Uh, I came across this um, 
I grew up in the South and I grew up listening to Southern gospel music. Uh, and there was a, uh, a Southern gospel song when I was a kid uh, called Excuses. It was kind of a, a doofus, a doofusy song. I say doofusy like it's an important word. Uh, it was one of those like kitschy little songs up talking about making excuses. Uh, and and when I was reading this passage in Luke, it, it just reminded me of that. Um, at Luke chapter nine, verse fifty-seven. So this is Luke nine fifty-seven. Uh, it says, as they, as they, the disciples, Jesus, were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Uh, and Jesus said to him, foxes have holes, birds have their of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Uh, to another he said, follow me. And he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Obviously, using uh, Luke using this illustration of, of people uh, as Jesus is, is, is in his ministry and he's uh, telling people, hey, follow me, or others are saying, hey, I'll follow you. And then he kind of describes these different excuses, if you will. Uh, that people offer. Um, the first one says, uh, he says, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus says, well, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And the idea behind that is that Jesus is saying, will you follow me wherever I go? Because I don't have earthly possessions. I'm not building up a retirement fund. I'm not building up a, a, a Roth IRA where I am simply walking this journey by faith. I'm living as like, this is my temporary home. I don't have any permanent home here. And the idea for the person that says, God, I will follow you. Do you live as though you have a permanent home here? Or is this just temporary? Now, again, we're not saying don't be uh, frugal and don't be wise about money and finances and saving and all of that. But when that becomes your priority, when that becomes your focus, Jesus says, hey, this is temporary. This is going to pass away. And if you're willing to follow me, then you're willing to live for eternity. You're willing to live for the kingdom, not just the now. Uh, the second one, it says, Lord, he says, let me first go and bury my father. And of course, we read that in our heartstrings. We're like, wow, that's, that, that's a reasonable uh, excuse to say, I'll do it. I'll follow you, but let me take care of this first. Let me take care of this family commitment first. And the next one, actually very similarly, he says, let me go home and say goodbye to those at my house. And we think, who wouldn't like want to go home and tell your parents goodbye or tell your family goodbye? Uh, and, and as we read these, Jesus' response, let the dead bury their own dead. Uh, but as for you, proclaim the kingdom of God. And then the other response is no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Sometimes these, these excuses don't really sound like excuses to us. And it sounds like what Jesus is calling them to do is something that is, is cruel or cold or, or uh, unjustified. Like, why can't I go tell my family goodbye? Uh, things like that. And as you, as we read through this and as we understand what Christ is telling his people is, is a focus. And I said it a minute ago with the first one, it's a focus on your priorities. There is nothing wrong with family and family commitments. We have been called by God to, to, to honor our spouse, to love our spouse, to serve our spouse, to raise our children, to follow Christ. Like God has gifted us children, uh, many of us children to raise them, to follow Jesus Christ. And ultimately though, my wife, my kids, my job, my other job, my other job, like all of those things don't matter if I have not prioritized my personal relationship with Jesus Christ, my personal walk with Christ. Now listen, my personal walk with Christ is not me sitting here in the office reading and studying for a sermon. My personal walk with Christ is my walk, like it's inward. It's, it's, it's my relationship with God. 
sometimes people think, well, you know, to put Jesus first, that means I got to push my family aside and forget them. And I'm going to be here and I'm going to do this. And I've got to do all these things for church ministry and church ministry is most important. No, 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 no. Do not make church ministry your idol. Do not make church your idol. Your family has importance. What I'm referring to is your personal connection with God. And your personal connection with God, while church is a helpful tool for that, and while church gives us a, a, an opportunity to, to work with that personal relationship, your personal relationship should not just be on Sunday mornings. It should not just be in Bible studies with your, with your small groups or with your ladies or your men's groups. Uh, it should not just be on family nights. Your personal relationship is every single day. It was really uh, an, a, a, a moment for me when my wife and I first got married and uh, it came up, some conversation came up and she said something about that, that she was like, I love God more than I love you. And I'm like, what? She goes, I love God more than I love you. And I really love you. She goes, I love you. You're my husband. But my relationship with Jesus is more important than my relationship with you. And I was like, ouch. That hurt. Like, it's our relationship. And it re it dawned on me that, yeah, personally, my relationship with God is the most important one. I'm not pushing my wife's relationship aside. I'm not pushing my children's relationship aside. But I'm saying my personal relationship is the most important. And where do you prioritize that? Now, don't neglect your wife. Don't neglect your husband. Don't neglect your children. Don't neglect your church or your family or your ministries. But make sure that your relationship with Jesus Christ is at the top. Is at the top. Am I prayerfully walking through my day? And you think, how do I have time for that? Well, have you ever prayed in the car? Have you ever uh, studied the Word of God while you're uh, uh, sitting on the couch or while you're um, working, eating dinner? Like, it, there's all kinds of opportunities for us to make sure that our relationship with Jesus Christ is, is priority. And when that happens, the closer I get to God and, and, and I'm married and my wife, she's working her way toward God as well. The closer she gets to following after God and following after Jesus, the closer we get to each other and the closer we get to our children. And, and there's this beautiful connection because uh, we have prioritized Jesus. We have prioritized him personally. Then we walk by faith. We get involved in our ministries, we get involved in our churches, in our homes, in our families, in our Bible studies, and all of that. But we have not made them idols. Jesus is the only one who deserves our worship. And the rest of it falls into place. There's so much more you could say there, but uh, that's for you to study on your own. I just wanted to share that quick thought. Excuses, offering excuses. Uh, Jesus says that's because your priorities are in the wrong place. Uh, I hope that you have a great week. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can let me know. Send me an email or, or phone uh, text or, or a YouTube comment even if you like commenting on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, have a great week, everyone. Uh, we will see you next week. Uh, ladies, we'll see you a couple of times over the next few days. Uh, family night Friday and then Sunday morning church uh, as we continue in Exodus. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next week.